Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here. And today we're gonna talk about ND filters that I think every Sony shooter needs, whether you shoot photo, video, etc. If you're a full frame Sony shooter, there are these ND filters made by Case and they have a set or they sell them individually, but they are these tiny little ND filters that fit right over the sensor. So they go in between the lens and the sensor, directly over the sensor, allowing you to cut light, even if you have a lens that doesn't have a filter thread. All right, so let's take a closer look. Again, these are made for full frame sensors. They have individual filters you can buy or you can buy the set. I have a set here. The set comes with four. You have a UV filter, a three stop filter, a six stop filter and a 10 stop filter. And then here they also include this little tool, which pretty much just looks like a guitar pick. But this is used to put in and remove the filter from the sensor. I'll show you guys how that works in a bit. Now, the reason why you might want ND filters over your sensor instead of over the front of your lens is if you have a lens that does not have a filter thread, like this 14 millimeter lens here. This is a lens that I love and I wish it had a filter thread in the front, but unfortunately it doesn't because the front of the lens has this bulb type shape. It doesn't allow regular ND filters. Now on this channel, I have made a video about a filter mount system that goes over this lens. However, if you have different lenses that you're trying to put that mount on, you actually need different adapters. So it can actually be a little pricey and you need to make sure you get the right one for the right lens. But it's kind of big, adds more weight to the front, and it can be a bit of an annoyance. These virtually add no weight. So a filter before the lens is actually a better way to go. Now, another reason why you might want to use these ND filters is if you are using a threaded ND filter and it's not cutting enough light. Now here I have my favorite variable ND filter. It's the Power XND Mark II made by Aurora Aperture. This cuts a lot of light, up to 11 stops of light. Now, especially for video, you tend to be shooting with slower shutter speeds. And then if you're using a wide aperture lens, like an f1.8 or f1.4, then you have too much light coming in if you're outdoors. A filter like this really comes in handy. However, it's still sometimes not enough. For example, look at this behind the scenes photo shoot video that we did that is on this channel. I used the Power XND close to 11 stops. And as you can see, as I get to the extreme, you start seeing vignetting on the corners, most notably on the top right corner. Now, because that video was a behind the scenes of a photo shoot, it's not really a big deal. I didn't care too much, but there's no way I'd ever be able to use that in a professional shoot. Now at the time I didn't have these filters and when I came across these, I knew I needed them because I sometimes need to cut a little extra light. So had I used maybe one of these filters, like maybe the six stop paired in conjunction with also using the threaded filter on the front of my lens and cut about another six or seven stops there, then I would get rid of all the vignetting because I wouldn't be using this variable ND filter at its extreme setting. Now my biggest issue with these filters is that they are so tiny and thin you can easily put finger smudges on it when you're trying to handle this. So one thing that I bought on Amazon was this pack of finger gloves. Yes, I know what they look like. Now these are made out of latex and they are good when handling electronics. And I highly recommend them because you can just easily put them on your finger. Latex finger gloves are great for handling this because then you don't have to worry about dirtying or smudging your filter. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the process on putting these on. We're gonna go ahead and remove this lens. Now, one thing that I do every time I'm taking off a lens, changing a lens or putting on one of these filters is I get a blower and then pointing downwards, I make sure that I blow out any of the dust that's possibly in there. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to put these filters on. In the front of each filter, you're gonna see some text. On the back of the filter, there is no text. This part here with no text is the part that is gonna face you. The part with the text is gonna face towards the sensor. Now what you wanna do is put the circular side first, tuck it into the lower part here that has this little circular part underneath the sensor. So I place this down first. Once it's in there, you can kind of let the sensor fall backwards, but you wanna make sure that it fits in there perfectly before you let the filter fall back. Well, now with this little guitar pick, go to each corner, not where the filter's at. Don't touch the glass. The little corner where the plastic metal mount is, go ahead and push that down. And then it will snap into place. It actually holds in place very well. And then if you tilt it down, it's not going to fall off. I've seen a lot of reviews online talk about the filters being kind of loose and wanting to fall off. That's because they're putting it the wrong way. If you put it the right way, it's not going to fall and it's going to fit nice and snug in there. Now, once the filter's on and in place, you can go ahead and put on your lens. And then now when you shoot, 
you will have that light being cut directly from the sensor. Now, depending on what you're shooting, you might want to use the three stop, six stop or the 10 stop. Now I'm going to show you guys how to remove it. We're going to take off the lens. Now, when it comes to removing this, you're going to use this little pick here and then you're going to put the tip right in that little groove here. There's an opening and then you can use that to kind of slowly and gently pop this up. Now you don't want to do it like this, how I have it right now. You want to have it at an angle. So that way the filter kind of falls a little forward and not into the sensor. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop it off with the fingers that do not have finger gloves. And then I'm going to catch the filter as it comes forward with the fingers that have the finger gloves. And there you go. Now I have it off. Now the UV filter that comes with the set does not cut any light, but it's great at protecting the sensor. So again, put that circular part first into the little circular part on the front of the sensor and then go ahead and push that in and then you'll feel it snap in there. Now I've seen people comment that they leave the UV filter on at all times when they're not using NDs so that way they can actually just protect their sensor. So it's great to be able to have a little extra protection. Now when I'm done with the finger gloves, I just throw these away. I bought a box that came with 150 of them. So I pretty much have 75 times that I'll be able to use these if I want to use the gloves once per change. All right, so right now we're outdoors, super bright day. I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, shutter speed 1 50th, and ISO at the minimum, which is 100. The color balance is set to daylight. Now the lens that I'm currently using is an F1.8, and right now we actually have to stop it down all the way to F22 because I'm using no filters. I have no ND filter on the front of the lens, no ND filter on the sensor. So in order to cut the light so it's not completely blown out and all washed out by this bright sun, we have to go to F22, the minimum aperture that we can go to, and with that, you are getting some diffraction, so you're losing some sharpness. And if you have any sensor dust, that's going to be noticeable on your screen, as well as you start to lose the background blur from a wide aperture. So F22, you start to decrease the background blur. All right, so now we're going to put a 10 stop ND filter over the sensor and try to open up that aperture, see if we can go to F1.8. All right, so we put the 10 stop filter on and we change the lens to F1.8. So we've opened up the lens as wide as we can with the aperture allowing the most amount of light. And as you can see, it's still too dark. So the 10 stop filter is actually a little too much even for a bright day. Now, maybe if you're in snow or something like that, then the 10 stop might work. But on a sunny day here in California, the 10 stop is a little too much. So we're gonna go ahead and change it to the six stop and see how that looks. All right, so now we put on the six stop filter. This is a lot better but it's still a little overexposed. So to really get that exposure right, we have to stop down the f-stop just a little bit. So maybe go from f1.8 to f2.8. All right, so now we're at f2.8. This is the right exposure that it should be, though ideally I would like to be at f1.8. What you can do is put another filter on top of the lens, maybe a very light filter, maybe a variable ND filter that does zero to three stops, and then you can find a balance. Or you could do the three stop filter from case on the sensor and then do another stronger filter over the lens. So you can fine tune and get that perfect exposure while keeping your f-stop wide open. Now I do want to quickly touch on the quality of the filters and how they affect the image. Here we have two screen grabs from this video. The left is when we had no filter on and we were at f22. So as you can see on the right side, it is sharper and that's with the six stop filter on. I have not noticed any major differences in sharpness. If you pixel peep, it might be a little bit less sharp than with no filter on. But the thing that is most noticeable is that there is a color shift. There's a little bit more red when you have the filters on. You can see it in the sky and on my skin tones. But overall, I think these filters are really well made and pretty essential, especially if you're shooting in slower shutter speeds. Just be aware that you will have to color correct a little bit. So there you guys have it. Those are the sensor ND filters made by Case. Again, they do sell them individually. I highly recommend getting the set. It has a three stop, six stop, 10 stop, and the UV filter, and it all comes in this little case, made by case. And if you're interested in getting them, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.